This lesson deals with an op amp as a voltage controlled voltage source. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 43. An op amp is actually a voltage controlled voltage source where the gain factor mu is a very large number. Let's take our representation of the op amp where I have no current entering, no current leaving the input terminals, and a voltage across the input terminals V in, and a voltage across the output terminals V out. The model for this is an open circuit because we have no current in an open circuit. And the voltage, V0, is a multiple of Vn. Use a voltage controlled voltage source between the output terminals with a factor of mu. Now for an ideal op amp, mu approaches infinity. Let's see what that means. Let's revisit the inverting amplifier. So as we had previously, we had our op amp with a feedback resistor R2, an input resistor R1, and our voltage source V1, and a load R sub L. Let's replace the op amp now by its model of a voltage controlled voltage source. So between the plus and minus terminals, I have an open circuit that causes the current to be zero in and out of those terminals. And between the output terminal and ground, there is a voltage controlled voltage source where the voltage across the input is multiplied by mu. Now in this problem, we again, assume we know the values of R1, R2, and R sub L, and the input voltage V1. The unknowns here are the output voltage and any currents that I have in the elements. So I'll call this current like we did before I1 and this one I2. Let's analyze the circuit. The current I1 enters a node, zero enters a node, and I2 leaves, so I1 is equal to I2. If you look at the controlled source here, the voltage across the controlled source is V2. V2 is equal to mu times Vn. Or you could say the rise in voltage equals the drop. But again, we just across the same two wires. V2 is equal to mu times Vn. We could write that as Vn is equal to V2 divided by mu. Let's see if we can solve for V2 in terms of V1 in the resistors and the control factor mu. The rise in voltage is V1. The drop is I1 times R1, and there's a rise of Vn. Add up the rises, set it equal to the drops. I could solve for V1 in terms of Vn and I1. I have I1 R1 minus Vn. But remember, Vn is equal to V2 over mu. I have a known voltage in terms of an unknown current I1 and an unknown voltage V2. Need one more equation. Let's go around this loop. So a drop in voltage of Vn, a drop in voltage of I2 times R2, and a drop in voltage V2. But there's no rise in voltage, so I'll set that equal to zero. Vn is equal to V2 over mu. I1 is equal to I2. And get this equation in terms of two unknowns, V2 and I1. Let's group the things that multiply V2. So one over mu plus one, and then I1 R2. So let's solve for I1. I1 is equal to this term on the other side of the equation, so a minus V2 times this quantity, and then divided by R2. In equation C on the last page, we found that V1 was equal to R1 I1 minus V2 over mu. And then we solved for I1 in terms of V2, and it found that it was minus V2 over R2 times the quantity 1 over mu plus 1. Pull out the R2, and let's pull out the V2. We've got minus R1 over R2. I'll put the V2 over here. I'm left with 1 plus 1 over mu. And let's pull this term inside. I'll pull that V2 out, put it on the other side of the equation. And then I have an R1 over R2 here, so I've got to put the reciprocal in. So when I multiply that out, I get back this term. Let's try that. So we multiply through here by minus R1 over R2 on this term. The R1s and R2s cancel, and I get a minus sign and 1 over mu, which is the same thing I have here once I've taken the V2 on the other side of the equation. Let's rearrange terms that have mu in it. So I have 1, I have 1 over mu times 1, and I have 1 over mu times R2 over R1. Now this is V1 divided by V2. I'm going to solve for V2 in terms of V1. So let's take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. So this becomes a minus R2 over R1 and then one over this quantity. Now, if the op amp is ideal, we're saying that mu approaches infinity. So let's take the limit as mu approaches infinity. Let's assume that this is just a resistor ratio plus one. You know, so we've just got a number here that's finite. When I divide it by a really big number, it approaches zero, and I'm left, left with minus R2 over R1. That's the same thing we got with the zero volt, zero current property. But why is that true? Well, there's no current going into the op amp. That was part of our definition. But the voltage across the terminals of the op amp we showed on the last page was V2 over mu. If V2 is finite and we divide it by a very large number, it approaches zero. We have to have some kind of feedback to tell the input terminals to shrink to zero based on the gain of the voltage controlled voltage source. And this is treating the op amp as a voltage controlled voltage source.